R works exceptionally well with arithmetic operations, and arithmetic operations are often the very best thing to use when starting to work with R just to get a feel for it. So you get an idea that it's like a calculator. Now here's the opening screen. Control L gets rid of all of the initial printout, so Control L is very useful. Now let's do some simple arithmetic operations just so you can see what's going on, so you can see how it goes. 2 plus 2, hit the Enter button. You get 4. You can also put spaces between the numbers and the plus sign, and it doesn't really matter. So 4 plus 5, this time with spaces, gives you 9. Multiplication, of course, works in the normal way using an asterisk. 3 times 4, giving you 12, hitting the Enter button. And 2 divided by 2, of course, gives you 1, using this slash for the division. 12 divided by 3, of course, giving you 4. So you can see that R works like a normal simple calculator. Of course, it can do much more. Let's keep on going through some of the arithmetic ex uh, expressions, such as the power sign using the 2 to the third power, giving you 8. And this time, 2 to the third power. But let's add something else to it. Let's add, well, 3 squared. That'll work giving you 17. So with R, the arithmetic operations can be quite complex. They all work fine. Let's add some parentheses, just so that you can get an idea with how parentheses work with R. They work just as you would normally write them with a piece of paper and a pencil. So here we have 2 cubed in parentheses, and we're subtracting 4 squared in parentheses, and that gives us negative 8. So with R, most of the arithmetic concepts are really very, very intuitive. Here we have a string of numbers, 3 minus 2 plus, I mean 4 minus 2 plus 3, giving you 5. And now we're going to have the power, but to a negative 2 power. So it's 3 to the negative 2 power. It works just like you would expect it to work. Now, in this case, we are going to show you how R works when it encounters a negative sign uh, after another arithmetic operation. So here we have negative 3 plus a negative 2, giving you a negative 5. You don't have to do anything special to make that work, such as special parentheses or anything else like that. I hit Control L again to clear the screen. And now let's go on into logarithms. Notice that the log of 100, you're dealing with natural logs. However, if I want to change the base to be a base of 10, I can simply specify the base of 10. Log of 100, comma, base equals 10. You don't have to spell out the word base, however. You can just abbreviate that with the letter B, and that works just as well. Here we have B equals... oh. Uh, typo there, b equals 10, and again that gives you the exponent that you would need to raise the base 2 to give you 100, and that's 2. Now if I wanted to know what the, lo what the arguments were that the logarithm function required, I could just type in logs, parenthesis, I'm sorry, args, A-R-G-S, parenthesis, log, and it will tell me what I'm what I'm needing to do. If I put a question mark in front of log, it'll open up another window, a help window, and that will tell me all sorts of information about what I need to write to make the logarithm function work. Now, there are many different ways you can get help with R. For example, you can just type in the word example, parenthesis, log, or whatever function you're looking at, and it will give you a bunch of examples that come out of the help litter that come out of the help files. Those are often all you really need to see an example of a function and then you can move on from there. However, if you want more information, you can actually see the help files themselves by simply typing help and then a parenthesis and then whatever function you're looking at, log and another help file will open up and you can see all there is to know, the arguments, the usage, examples, and so on.